for the province. <laughs> and they laughed and they laughed and they laughed. And they got home at 5 a.m. and they still come to church Sunday morning and they were, they were still drunk in the spirit. And it was funny. It was a good story. I wanted them to testify about it and maybe make a movie sometime. <laughs> but... <laughs> it, was, it was good. It's so funny. I laughed and I laughed. These ladies are here. They come to Saskatoon to a revival conference and they got revived all right. Amen. <laughs> Making all kinds of noise in the community when they come home. And they're laughing, waking people up at 5 a.m. And I had to call the police on them and stuff. <laughs> anyway, lots of fun. Amen. It's good. God is good. I was um, um, checking out online and we got, I don't know how many countries we've been, people have been listening to, I think about 10 or 12, something like that, all over the world on our website and uh, quite a few thousand, I don't even know what it is at anymore. Um, but I just checked out, we have a friend in Saskatoon, um, Shane is a friend of the Smith and he's been here a couple times and he phoned, or he emailed me. And uh, about a month ago, and he says, you know, I'm, he says, I've been to your church a couple of times, and I've been listening to the messages online, and I'm convinced God is doing something mighty there. And um, he says, uh, I'm going to put all, I'm going to take your messages, and I'm going to put them on YouTube so that it would be easier to get access. So I just went, the other day, yesterday, I think it was on Friday, I checked, I just punched in my name on YouTube, and, and all of a sudden I look, and there's this whole page of messages there on <laughs> It's unbelievable. I like, go, oh, this is, I started listening to one. It was pretty good, too. And uh, uh, I was amazed that, at that. And so then I figured, well, you know, before I'm going to Google my name and see where my name comes up now. Because at one time it was like on about page 10, you know, and it's somewhere little thing there and this little video clip. And, and so I punched in and put my name in Google. And, and here it's like number one. <laughs> Uh, of all the Terry Severs, there's lots of Terry Severs. It's like number one. You want to know why it is number one, though? It's because I, I pastor the Assiniboia Apostolic Church. <laughs> Begins with A. All right. I thought, well, that is so cool, you know. Oh, man. I love this. God is good. All these other guys are successful businessmen, millionaires, multimillionaires, teaching people how to make money, and here I am. I'm on the top of the list. <laughs> Grade nine education. Twice, though. <laughs> yeah, but, but anyway. Yeah. Actually, I, I did get grade 10. Um, it was a plea bargain, though. They told, me, they told me they'd give it to me as long as I never come back, so... I kind of wish I would have never, I, you know, I wish I would have took that offer and then came back. <laughs> what could they have done? <laughs> then I would have changed my life. But anyway, praise the Lord, God is good, and uh, you just never know what's going to happen in life. But I, I'm just really excited, you know, we may not have a million hits or anything, but we're ready for revival. Amen. We're ready, they, 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 we're, we're on there, and we're online, it's everything set up, ready to roll, I just Google in, you know, they always Google the pastor's name for some reason, and, and so it's good how everything's working out, and, but we want Jesus' name to be glorified online, amen? And uh, we want a body of believers who are activated. Uh, we don't want anybody to come here because of a preacher or a good worship team, we want people to come here because Jesus is coming, Amen. And so, and so, praise the Lord! I'm just so excited about life and and uh, the challenges in life that we have are it's unbelievable at times. Uh, summer months seem to be more intense for some reason, but it's been good. And uh, today, I want to talk uh, about um, a, a real interesting topic that's just been brought to light, and I entitled this "Promoted to Friendship." And uh, and really, to become a friend of God is the ultimate promotion. And I want to talk about that today, what that means to be promoted, to, to get this ultimate promotion, to, to be a friend of Jesus. And uh, out of that, everything will just begin to flow in your life. And my goal is to help each and every one of us, and, and obviously me, to become a, so I can be called a friend of Jesus at all times. 
uh, but ultimately to help other people get into that relationship. Um, you know, you might have some personality quirks in your life that are very irritating. And uh, I, I know I do, um, but Jesus has been working on those things. And he's, in the process, he's been promoting me along the way here to certain levels in relationship with him. And uh, to be a servant is awesome. It's great. I've been serving God for just about 20 years now. But I feel a promotion shift taking place to going into that realm of becoming a friend. And out of that realm of becoming a friend, I think that's where we're really going to become effective as a body. That people would come here and say, hey, these people are really friends with Jesus. And it proves through their ministry, it proves how they talk, it proves how they love one another. They work together and, and they really display the character of Christ. And really becoming a friend of God is, is that. A friend, you're, you're developing the character, God is developing His character into your personality. You see, your personality, I don't want to change. God, I don't want to change nothing about you. It's not my responsibility. God wants to change your character, though, so that your personality can become an effective personality for the kingdom of God. And so that's what he's been doing in my life. He's been changing my character. I have a personality that he's been given me, and I thought there was something wrong with my personality. My personality, there was nothing wrong with my personality. It was my character, and it continues to be the flaw of my life yet. It's like the character isn't quite where God wants it to be. And so out of this whole thing, what's going on here in, in the last few weeks is there's been this thing about the fruit of the Spirit where we have to be activated with the fruit of the Spirit in order for the gifts to be activated within the congregation. So it works. They're, they act, they're active, but they're just here and there, hit and miss all the time. And so God wants the, the gifts, or what I like to call it, the wholeness of the Spirit of God moving through us. Not just an individual gift, but He wants the wholeness. And I think that's the goal that He has for His, his people, is, is for us to walk in the wholeness not just in the gifting. Gifting, the only reason we have to go walk in or depend on the gifts right now is because we're still fairly carnal. So anyway, so we, God is working on our character so that we can, we can have the wholeness become a, and to become a friend of God. And to be a friend is to know the heart of someone. And to be a friend of God is to know the heart of God. And, and to know the heart of God is, is, is really is what's been changing my life. And so let's pray together and let's just stand for a second. See, I want, I want you to just kind of hold on to one another's hands and we'll do something a little different today. You know, you, you, you can, if you can connect across, if you can move your feet, you, you, you know, don't be shy. These people in this section are the same body of Christ as this section. Okay. So we want to remember that. You know, we, we get our, we're like cattle. We get our stalls. This is my stall. Don't touch my stall. Okay. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know so, so we don't have to be like that. You know, okay. So with this is, I just want us all to connect because it gives us a picture of the body. We're all needed. We're all needed. So, Okay. So now, let's pray this prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, speak to our heart and change our lives. In your precious name, amen. Hallelujah. I bet you guys are glad that we bought these new chairs. <laughs> I try. I try to be brief. I do, I do. So the Holy Spirit takes over and I try to talk to him. Say, so, you know, the people would like to go home today and have lunch together, but he says, I want them to feed on me. So amen, hallelujah. So there's examples in the Bible of friends. There, it is possible to become a friend of God. Amen. Even more so now than ever before because of the work that Jesus did on the cross of Calvary. Um, Moses was one of those people that was considered a friend of God. And uh, how many want to be a friend of God? 
Like, if you don't put your hand up, there's something wrong with you. Like, really, if you don't want to be, if you're, if you're just shy, and I'm not saying that, but if you really don't want to be a friend of God, we'll pray for you. Because he's got the greatest benefit package of, known to all creation. Amen. And to be a friend is amazing. And, and, and I love Moses because Moses had a relationship that was second to none. I see some people are freezing, so can we just turn the air down a little bit? And um, so Moses was an, he, I, he's one of my heroes in the Bible. I, I can't wait to talk to him someday because he had a congregation of two million people. Yeah. The biggest church I know of ever. And uh, there was times, there was one time when Moses went up to the mountain and, you know, God's hanging out with him and they're doing their thing and, and they made a calf of, to worship this calf. They said, Moses is gone, he ain't coming back, so let's worship something that we can see. So they make a calf and Aaron, Aaron says, we just threw this gold in the fire and I'd pop this calf, you know, and, and so... So, so God's looking down at this, and, and he's hanging out with Moses, and he says, Moses, you know those people that you led out of Egypt? They're friends, right? Those people, he's telling Moses, you know those people that you led out of Egypt, your people? And he says, I'm going to go kill them all. And Moses goes, well, you know, God, um, to tell you the truth, actually, they're your people, and you led them out of Egypt. And if you did that, how is that going to look for your name? You led them out of slavery into the wilderness and you killed them all. So God relented and changed his mind because of his friend. And really what he, God was doing was God was bringing Moses into his decision-making process. And that's what God wants us to do. He wants to take us into his decision-making process so his glory can be known throughout the earth. Oh, that's good. I... You want to write that down for me? Okay, so I like that. In Exodus chapter 33, verse 11, it says, Inside the tent of meeting, and I'm reading out of New Living, it's a little different than this. And quite a bit, yeah, it's a little different in, in the New Living translation. I'm reading, and we don't have that on the, there, so that's why we don't have it up. But it's, so I'm just giving you, this is just the introduction to what I'm going to preach, okay, what I'm talking right now. This isn't preaching time yet. So it says in Exodus thirty three eleven in the New Living, it says, Inside the tent of meeting, the Lord would speak to Moses face to face as a man speaks to his friend. And, and, you know, whenever there was a task to do, who did he call on? Moses, right? Right? So there's friendship is connected to this task. And then in, in uh, 33, verse 17, again in the New Living, it says... The Lord replied to Moses, I will indeed do what you have asked. You have found favor with me, and you are my friend. I like that. I just can't wait. I want that to be something that I experience, and I want that for you to be your experience someday that you can sit with God and, you know, you're my friend. I love hanging out with you. That's why people like Catherine Coleman were so effective. They knew how to be a friend of God. You know, Catherine Coleman, I, I've said this before, you know, she, she wasn't probably one of the greatest preachers that ever lived. She surely couldn't sing very good. But for some reason, Jesus hung out with her, you know, and, and he displayed everything, you know, all these people, thousands of people healed. And so he, there's, there's this ability, you can become a friend of God. And in Job chapter 29, verse 4, it says, Oh, for the days, this is in the NIV, Oh, for the days when I was in my prime, when God's intimate friendship blessed my house. Oh, look at that. Isn't that something? Oh, for, and this is the times, this is where he's down and out, and you know, he's having all these struggles. But he's, rem he's reminiscing of this time when God in God's intimate friendship blessed his house. Isn't that awesome? And... And Psalm, verse, or Psalm chapter 25, verse 14, in, out of the message says, God's friendship is for God worshipers. They are the ones he confides in. <laughs> I like that. Amen? And so that's, uh, there's just, these are just examples that it's possible to have a friendship with God 
that can be second to none to no other relationship on earth even. Romans chapter 5, verse 9 to 11, out of the message, says this. It says, Now that we are set right with God by means of this sacrificial death, the consummate blood sacrifice. The, the word consummate means uh, complete, perfect, carried to the utmost extent or degree. So it's the complete sacrifice, the ultimate sacrifice. Uh, and, and then it goes on to say, there is no longer a question of being at odds with God in any way. If when we were at our worst, we were put on friendship terms with God by the sacrificial death of His Son, when we were at our worst, not when we were at our best, when we were at our worst. Now that we are at our best, just think how our lives will expand and deepen by means of His resurrection life. Now that we have actually received this amazing friendship with God, we are no longer content to say it in plodding prose. We sing and shout our praises to God through Jesus, the Messiah. It's, it's good stuff. Good stuff. So it's possible to be a friend with God. In James uh, chapter 2, verse 23, it talks about another friend of God. And it says, in the scripture was fulfilled that says, Abraham believed God and it was accredited to him as righteousness. He and he was called God's friend. Why? Because he believed God. Amen? He believed God. So friendship with God means that you believe him. <laughs> right? You know, that's, that's a good friendship. You believe him, you know. Have you ever had people hung around it? I don't believe a word you say. I have. <laughs> okay. okay. You know, so it's hard to say that, you know, that's a friend, you know. So now, friendship, out of uh, the dictionary, out of my old dictionary that Charlie got me, um, 1812 edition, it says, friendship, an attachment to a person proceeding from intimate acquaintance and reciprocation of kind offices. Or from a favorable opinion. So it's this intimate relationship. With, it's a friend. True friendship is a noble and virtuous attachment springing from a pure source. I like that. A respect for worth or amiable qualities. False friendship may subsist between bad men and between thieves and pirates. This is temporary attachment springing from interest and may change in a moment to enmity or rancor. It's something, you know, that, that can change. You know, you've seen those friendships. You hear about it in the drug cartels. Though. There's these great alliances that are made till you don't need you anymore. And they put a bullet through your head. See you later, buddy. <laughs> you know, that's, that, that's not a true friendship. A true friendship is you, we're sticking through everything together. The good, the bad, the ugly. Right? Jesus is our friend and he's sticking with us through the good, the bad, and the ugly. You know what I like to be friends of Jesus? You know why I like to be friends of Jesus? Because he's never, he's never bad or ugly. He's only good. And I like that kind of friend because I can depend on him. He ain't going to get ugly with me. Amen? And so... Now I'm going to start preaching. John, chapter 15, verse 1 to 17. And this is a portion of Scripture about friendship, and it's about promotion. It says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes so that it will even be more fruitful. So if you're bearing good fruit, get ready. You're going to have a pruning. Everybody thinks, oh, it's all, let's just bear fruit. So it's always going to feel good. No, there's going to be a pruning. You are, already, you are already clean because of the word that I've spoken to you. Remain in me and I remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. 
I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, and he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Say that. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not remain in me, he is like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up and thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be given to you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourself to be my disciples. So that's the goal, is to bear much fruit so that they can really tell we are disciples, the world. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you obey my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have obeyed my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. Say complete. complete. My command is this. Love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. If I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I've called you friends for everything that I have learned from my Father and I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit that will last. Then the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. This is my command, love each other. And so in verse 14 and 15 here, this is the important part. This is where the promotion takes place. You are my friends if you do what I command. If I, if I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know what his master's business is, instead I've called you friends for everything that I have learned from my Father I have made known to you. So there's nothing that Jesus knows that he holds back from his friends. Nothing. Jesus does an amazing thing here. He provo- promotes his, serv- or his disciples from servants to friends. There's a difference. It's a big difference. Like I said, over the years I've been a servant. But I feel now friendship is beginning to develop after all these years. I'm a slow learner. With this promotion, attention shifts from the task at hand to the one within reach. It promotes from thinking about the task that must be done to the one that you can reach, to Jesus. Your focus then begins to change. They were given, at this moment, they were given secret access to the, to the heart of God. Servants, you know, like it says, servants don't know what their master is doing. They are task-oriented. Obedience is their primary focus. Okay? So don't get mad at me right now with what I'm about to say. And, you know, because e- obedience is important. He, remember Jesus said, you are, you are my friends if you do whatever I command you, right? But friends are less concerned about disobeying than they are about disappointing. They don't want to disappoint their friends. So naturally, out of that, not wanting to disappoint Jesus, obedience flows. But now it's not because of task-oriented, it's because of the one that's our friend. You see, Jesus never walked around spouting off rules and regulations and all kinds of things that had to be had to, he, 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 he promoted himself. He promoted the fruit of the Spirit that was in him. He says, everything, he says, everything that I'm doing is what I see my Father doing. He says, every single thing that you see me doing, I just, I just learned this from my Father. So the nature of God is, is del- healing, he, our saving, rescuing, delivering, healing, all this stuff. He says, I'm just doing this. And when you, whenever you see the movies about Jesus, he's always walking around and he looked like a robot, you know. The only thing they needed was the stutter step, you know. Like he's, good, he's just like a robot. But he was the most joyful person that had ever lived on the face of the earth. 
It gave him great joy to release that woman who had been bound by Satan for 18 years that was bent over. And it, he gets great joy out of delivering the alcoholic and the drug addict. And he, he takes great joy and he's got a smile on his face when he does it. And, and you know, you, you start beginning to see what friendship is with God. You become like Jesus. And so friends are less concerned about disobeying than they are about disappointing. Friends gain access to the Father's heart. Jesus paid the price of our access to the Father. The new covenant gives all who come to Jesus access to the Father. It's like a friendship access pass. Right? You know, like having a Costco card, you can go in Costco and shop. So you got a card. You can spend all your money in that place. Literally. Really fast. Because you have a card, you can go in there and shop. <laughs> but I like the God access, the friendship access. You can go into His presence. Amen. You can go into His presence and you, you're a friend of God. You can sit with God. You can actually hear what he has to, tell, has to say so that you can do what you have to do. It's awesome. It's a great thing. Friendship changes everything. It changes everything. It's, it's changing me from a religious zealot <laughs> to, <laughs> to a friend of God. Amen? And I, 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 it doesn't take long to get religion on you. Right? Okay, and, and I had it, I've had it, I'm still fighting in certain areas. As I'm learning how to love people for who they are, I, I learn how to love them for what they can be in God, not who they are at the moment. I look at people that way, I, I see, I'm beginning to see things, now I can see, actually see where the, I'm beginning, because this friendship door is opening with God, I can begin to see where people are headed for, headed to, for the good rather than the bad. And so out of that friendship, I can start making prophetic declaration on people who are really struggling and going in the wrong de direction. I can make prophetic declaration on somebody and it can change the course of their life because it's, a pr it's not a curse on them anymore. Chris uh, Valentin, or I don't know how you say it, but something like that, pastor from Bethel. At one time, he suffered from depression so bad for three years. It was the darkest thing he ever lived in. It got so bad that every night demons would come and visit him and tell him who he wasn't. They lied. To, they lied. He, did you know demons are liars? They lie all the time. And there wasn't a day went by that he didn't think about killing somebody. And, and he, demons visited him every night and told him all kinds of lies. And it was real dark, 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 dark. Somebody talked him to go into, uh, hear this preacher preach. And this guy told him, he picked him out of the crowd. And he says, come here, I, want to, I, want to, I got something to tell you. And he, prof he just spoke life over him. He says that you will be a voice for God. You will speak to the nations. And you, um, you will be a pillar in my church, in the church of Jesus Christ. And, and, and so right there, it set, took him off the course of doom to light. Because he prophetically declared, declared what he had seen. The picture, he's seen the picture of what God sees him as. And we tend to look as the, with the natural eyes all the time at somebody, who somebody is when you see them by their actions, what they're doing, and we look at that and we say, oh, that's the wrong thing. And well, that's the perverted picture that Satan has de destroyed, beginning to destroy a, a human being. And so he, he, start, um, he would go around and he was a messed up guy and the pastor Bill would tell him, he'd say, 
he would say, this is my friend here. He's going to preach to the nations. He's going to cast out demons. He goes where demons, where demons dare not tread. You know, where people dare not tread because of demons. He said he goes right in there. And he wasn't doing any of it, but he was speaking life. And now he's a powerful man of God that helps bring people deliverance. Okay? So friendship changes everything. His heartbeat becomes our heartbeat. God's heartbeat becomes our heartbeat. His presence becomes our greatest inheritance. And I was thinking about, I wrote this down this morning. I was, woke up with this thought in my mind. The Bible says that bad, bad company corrupts good character. And then I went, I wrote this down in the same sentence. It says, good company corrects bad character. <laughs> so, right? Good company corrects bad character. Good company destroys bad character. So, our functions in life begin to change when we start having, when we get into a friendship from God. Instead of working for, for Him, we work with Him. We work not for His favor, but from His favor. There's a good thing, too. You see, I'm, I'm learning this. I'm shifting from the servant to the friend. I'm learning to, to be, and there's a season for everything in life, right? And, and so I'm learning this, and God's really developing stuff in all of our lives that we need to understand. We need, we need to start thinking outside the box of what we know and start connecting with God. And so you work from His favor, not for His favor. And it's impossible to detach from Him. In this position, He entrusts us with none uh, you know, in this position, he had trust us with, with more of his power, and we are naturally changed into his likeness from this position. We are starting to become changed into his likeness. Amen? Because of him. In this position, you cannot be crippled by the opinions of others. Amen? In the position of friendship, you cannot be crippled by the opinions of others. It becomes a non-issue. Reinhard Bonnke says that. He says, you know, I, he says, the closer I got to Jesus, I become immune to criticism. But becoming immune to criticism, he says, I naturally become immune to the praises of men too. Because it's by the praises of men that you'll be tested. Amen? Um, you don't fit to work into other people's expectations, but burn with the realization of who the Father says that we are. That's, you're not going on expectations of what others think of you. or You're going on who the Father says you are. Have you ever read the Bible and said what the Father, who the Father says you are because of the work that Jesus has done on the cross? Have you ever understood that really begin to understand who you are as a kingdom child? And, and so there's, there's a difference between a servant and a friend. And the classic example of this is found in Luke chapter 10, verse 38 to 42. I love this story, and I've read it so many times, but I'm starting to see it different now. And uh, verse 38, Luke 10, it says, And Jesus and his disciples were on their way. He came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he had said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered. I love that. Martha, Martha. The Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but only one thing is needed. Mary has chosen what is better and it will not be taken away from her. So, Mary sought to please him by being with her, while Martha tried to please him through service. Amen? And, and so Jesus said to Mary, and, and this is where this could be confusing too, but Jesus said Mary chose the better part. You know, Martha was in busy making progies for Jesus that Jesus didn't order. Right? <laughs> you know, that, that's, that's what was going on there. You know, she's, making, she's there making progies and cutting up onions and melting butter and all that stuff. 
And doing more for Jesus is the method servants use to increase favor. And I've often done that in my life too. But a friend has a different focus. They enjoy the favor they have and use it to spend time with their friend. But on the other hand now, people can use this scripture as to be, I'm going to be a Mary and I'm never going to do nothing ever again in my life. I'm just going to sit there and soak in the presence of Jesus. And, and it's just me and Jesus soaking. Oh, it's such a great friendship. But remember, Jesus doesn't stay put in one place too long. He's at work all the time. Mary wasn't a non-worker. This is, the, this is where we got to understand. Mary wasn't a non-worker. Mary wasn't a, at all. Was she, she just learned to serve him from his presence. She made progies that Jesus ordered. Right? She just didn't do a bunch of stuff just so that we could get, you know, a lot of work done for Jesus. We got to have all this stuff. She did it. She did what Jesus wanted her to do. Working from his presence is better than working for his presence. Remember that Jesus isn't on vacation doing nothing. He's a worker. I'll tell you what's on Jesus' mind right now. Over six billion people on this planet. He's six billion people that he wants his people to reach with the gospel of the kingdom, with, to give them life, to give them that, 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 the hope that they need. And if we have the mind of Christ, if we're in his presence, experiencing Jesus and his friendship and his love and everything, he's going to give us direction on what we need to be doing what we should be doing, not what we think we should be doing. He's telling us, giving us direct, direct orders as to how he wants us to handle this. And he's doing it, and we're flowing. Now we're beginning to flow with the fruit that he has, and he has all the fruit of the Spirit, right? He's got them all. He doesn't have just one or two like us. <laughs> trying to think of the one I might have but I'll, th I'll have to pray about that. But anyway, Jesus has got them all, and it's his desire is that we would have all of the fruit of the Spirit so that we'd be like him. And we get that from hanging out with him because good character corrects bad. A good, good company corrects bad character. Amen? I love being with Jesus because it's, you know, he's not a complainer. He doesn't complain all the time. You, you ever notice the friends, the friend, the people that you ever see really optimistic people? They're always with optimistic people. You really see pessimistic people? They're always with pessimistic people. And they're like this group that just flows all over the place. You know, everywhere they go. I remember when I worked in the mines in northern, or uh, yeah, Saskatchewan, Ontario. I did studies on people. It was amazing, and. Because nobody wanted to hang with me because like-minded spirits connect together. I, I found one guy half later on life that wanted Jesus. But anyway, I noticed one thing. The guys that smoked pot always hung out with the guys that smoked pot. And the guys that drank beer and whiskey and all that kind of stuff, they always hung out with the guys that drank beer and whiskey and all that stuff. But here's the amazing part. They were from all over Canada. They'd get off the plane... And they just go, oh, <laughs> you know, it was like, hi, how are you? I'm so-and-so, you know, and yeah. You want to go for a beer after? Yeah, sure, yeah, right on, yeah, I want to. And then, and then the guy, hey, you want to smoke a bar? You want to enjoy? Hey, where are you from, man? Oh, I'm from Vancouver, uh, you know, and, and, and it was amazing. I watched it all the time, and, I, and I'd go to these guys, I'd say, did you guys... Know each other before you come here? No, never seen each other before. You know. And so I thought, holy oh, man, this is amazing. And they just, whoosh, whoosh, and the complainers are over here, and there's the odd optimistic guy would come and sit with me. And, you know, and, and, and so it was just like that all the time, and that's what it is. You're, you're influenced by your friends. 
So we want to become friends of Jesus so we can influence the world so they can really know how he thinks about them. That he really, you can really learn how he really loves people, no matter what they look like, no matter how, you know. You know, Jesus doesn't get upset when we get ticked off at him. He just keeps rolling along and, oh no, they'll come around someday. They'll come around, they just keep hanging out with me. Someday they'll learn, they'll get my characteristics, they'll get my attributes. And so... It's amazing, John, and to prove that Jesus works all the time, John chapter 5, verse 36 says, I have a testimony weightier than that of John. For the very work that the Father has given me to finish, which I am doing, testifies that the Father has sent me. So his finished work is what testifies. In our finished work, we need to display the true character of Jesus to the world. Amen? Of who he is. He's not, he, he didn't come... To destroy the world, he come to save the world. He come to save the world from destruction. And he, all the work that he does, he does it out of the fruit of the Spirit flowing and then everything just flows. Just poof. This is not an effort. So if you need an injection of the fruit, you know, we need to talk to Jesus. Shelly talked about it the other night. Uh, and Thursday night she testified how she went home to help her mother and because of that sermon I preached on the fruit of the spirit she's doing it now as she's in love with Jesus and loves them and loves to do something for him because Jesus loves to do that for them rather than being serving your parents or anything under obligation you're doing it because you love God everything you do like this VBS coming up here this week you know I, I, I've, I've done that, and I've, I've gone, oh, I'm doing VBS, and I'm teach these little brats how to love the, love the Lord, you know. You know, and that kind of attitude, it's like, you know, there's a, you know, and people are, I am going to work for God this week, I'm going to go to VBS, and I'm going to be this, I'm going to show them, teach them little guys how to love the Lord. You know, they go home all mad and all upset, and. Oh, I remember a couple of years ago, we had this one young fellow. He lives in the States now. I laughed so hard. I'm, I, don't, I can't remember who I was, but I was playing the part of something, buddy. And, uh, and we're trying to teach. And he's got this rope, and he's wrapping it around his head. And he's just like, like I said, and he's making it's just, just a, a toy. And I just burst out laughing. I laugh. what, what, why are you doing that? But Jesus says, just, just don't worry about it. Minister to the boy. You know, they're not anywhere in the planet. They're not even on the same planet lots of times. You know, they're, they're like over there. They're somewhere off on a spaceship, Atlantis somewhere. But, you know, but you bring them back to reality with love, right? Amen? And so there's, the, there's a danger, I guess, and, and I've, I've prayed about this a lot because I don't want to be one of these guys like Matthew chapter 7 and um, I want to I want to be careful never to become what is that 21 yeah uh, Matthew 7 21 it says no not everyone who says to me Lord Lord will enter the kingdom of heaven that's pretty scary right there um, but only he who does the will of my father who is in heaven it's so, okay it's, you're doing the will but here it goes on to say, Many who say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? And, dry, and in your name did we not drive out demons and perform many miracles? And I will tell you, I never, uh, I'll tell you plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evil, do, e evil doers. And um, when I, I read that, I go, well, I don't, want, I don't want to do a bunch of things that are meaningless. And so that word new there is the same word from the Old Testament. It's derived of that same word yada uh, in New Testament where it says that Adam knew Eve and that they, they, they knew, she knew Eve, meaning they had intimate relationships and 
they had a child come out of that yada, that intimacy. And so Adam knew Eve, they, and when they did that, they were procreating with God at that moment there. They're procreating with God. They're connected with God, procreating, and then out of that come a child. And, and so Jesus, he wants us to procreate with him in the spirit realm, too, by setting people free, casting out demons, healing the sick. But it's got to come out of yada. It's got to come out of intimacy with the Lord. It can't be done out of just, I'm doing this, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to get a good name, and I'm going to become famous, and... And really, that's what he's talking about here is these people wanted to, they, they used the name of the Lord to g- gain favor with the world and it looked good and all that stuff, but it's out of yada, it's out of intimacy with the Lord that the ministry should flow. And so that we can procreate with the Lord, meaning we can bring healing, deliverance, and life by procreating with Jesus in the spirit realm. Oh, I messed you all up with that one. That's good? You got that? Everybody goes, it's like that night I was preaching on fruit of the spirit. Everybody's looking at me. You got to be kidding me. You know, I talked about weapons of our warfare. And when I said that a lot of those weapons are the fruit of the spirit, everybody kind of, huh? Huh? <laughs> you mean you're not gonna, we're not going to get a sword? <laughs> I want the sword. I want to cut the serpent's head off. You know, how about a mini Uzi, something? No, it's all love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, all that stuff. That's the weapons of our warfare. And y'all just give me the same look here just now. <laughs> You're scaring me. You still love me? Uh, Mike Bickle, I read an interesting statement by him. And he's, um, yeah, he started IHOP. He does, he runs IHOP. He's a prayer movement. Um, He made an interesting statement. He said, there are lovers and there are workers. Lovers get more work done than do workers. A passionate lover will always outperform a good servant in pleasing him. <laughs> it's quite a statement. Huh? <laughs> We're, I'm talking about for Jesus, you know. Okay, I got to correct. I got to. Yeah. Okay, I ought to work for Jesus, right? <laughs> Loving Jesus. <laughs> Lovers of Jesus. Okay, there. Whew. Started to sweat there for a second. But, okay. It's so, that's it. You're doing the work from his presence. Are you getting this? Okay. And so friendship, he promotes us from servants to friends. And this church, I believe, This body of believers is going to be known for that. That's what you call a prophetic declaration. I just said it just now. Okay? So I don't have to say, thus saith the Lord, to have a prophetic declaration. I'm speaking that and believing that. I'm believing that this, when when we come here a couple years ago, I put on the sign, first of all, and I made a mistake, a place of, Healing and restoration. It's on the sign out there. But now I said it's a place of hope, healing, and restoration. Because I see it as that. I see it as that because Jesus dwells here. Jesus dwells in his people. Oh, it's one o'clock already. But doesn't time fly when you're having fun? See, that's why I, I never know time because I have so much fun preaching. It's just a wonderful thing. Um, But God is about to promote a whole bunch of you into friendship from servanthood. 
And I think I'm on that list. I'm pretty sure. I don't know. I think that's what his desire is for all of us. To be friends of Jesus. And, and when he, guess what? If you have a body of believers who are friends with Jesus, who are lovers, not servants, who are lovers with him, who love him, you're going to see fruit flow out of that, you know, that, that it's going to change the community. It's not just going to change this, pe- this right here. It, people will be drawn to this, to, to this body. And I don't mean just in this church. I mean to your houses, um, to your workplaces. It's not just when we get together corporately. We're just getting armed and dangerous here. <laughs> armed and dangerous against the kingdom of darkness. Because the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, they're not of this world. They're of, of another world, and we can display them on the earth here as the fruit of the Spirit. Amen? <laughs> so, it's really easy. It's like becoming more like Him. I'm finally beginning to understand who we are in Christ. And we're in Him. I preached that the other night, the Scripture. We're in Him. Not He's in us. We're in Him. And I'd sooner be in Him than have Him just in one part of my body. You know, I want my everything. I want to be immersed in the presence of Jesus. Amen? <laughs> oh, this is good stuff. Amen. That's a good word right there, right? Amen. Other people say, people say now, oh, he's got pride because he said that's a good word. No, I just, it's the word of God, you know. I say that's the word. <laughs> it's a good word. Mm-hmm. Amen. Praise the Lord. And so I'm expecting in the next year, two, three, maybe four, to really s- start hearing a testimonies like Josh, what you said on a regular basis. Not few and far between. The reason we have few and far between is because we don't have the fruit of the Spirit yet. As a whole. Every area of our lives. And that's coming. We're challenging one another, aren't we? On that lately. It's been really good. (laughs) Is that attitude fruit? (laughs) You know, that bad attitude, is that fruit? You know, and and that's good. The challenge in waking people up. uh, Because sometimes we get sidetracked and Figure out, you know, Jesus really is good. Amen. He's a king. He's a king. Amen. He's worthy of our praise. I love when we come together and worship him. We're praising him, worshiping, honoring him, glorifying his great name because of who he is and what he's done. He's given us a hope. The only thing I have, the only reason I have any hope or a smile on my face today is because of Jesus. Amen. And I was doing everything, a lot of things I was doing in ministry was out of servanthood rather than friendship, and it's finally connecting. This is good. This is good news for us all here, right? Because we're not doing it anymore out of an obligation, we're doing it out of the one that we love, Jesus. Good stuff.